Jesus name. Amen. So this morning I'm continuing on the what I started two weeks ago. It was switch on the light and uh, be a light in the darkness. This morning uh, it's let your light shine and live as children of light. The last week based on this scripture we emphasized uh, darkness. More like, how, what is darkness? What does it mean to be in darkness? And give the definitions and explanations of, of what it is. And the next slide uh, is a bit of a, su a summary of our last uh, time. Uh, but there is so much more. I encourage you to go back to YouTube and always uh, go back and you will have the foundation of the message that continues this morning. Uh, the darkness is used as a symbol of sin and the effects of sin, uh, ignorance of truth, uh, the inability to find a way to God, uh, disobedience, rebellions, and it means like living in the prison. But happily, God already has rescued us from the power of darkness. We explained all of these in the last message. And he brought us into a kingdom victorious over the power of the evil one and ready to live a new life. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So that's the part that we want to emphasize uh, today. The light and what it means to walk, to live, and the light. And I have a question for you before we go any further. Do you think it is easy to live in the light? Easy. The concept is easy. God is light. We know that. There's so much that says light in the, in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Jesus is the light of the world. We know a lot about it. So because we know a lot, we are familiar with the contrast. We are familiar with the concept. So it sounds easy, isn't it? It sounds easy. Walk in the light. Yeah, of course. I'm a Christian. I walk in the light. So let's see this morning if the application of that is that uh, easy. So we know that the Apostle John is the writer who wrote the most about this con contrast, this concept of the light in the New Testament. In the New Testament, there are 72 references to the light. So that's a lot in just a few, a few books in the New Testament. But half, almost half of these 72 are used by John. When John opens up his first book, declares who is Jesus, the eternal uh, word of God, the logos of God, and he is the light that brings life. And he goes to say that Jesus is the light of the world. Those who follow him, that means you, will never walk in darkness. Hey, amen, that's a good news. But we will have the light of life, a light that enrich our life. That's what it means. And that if we believe in him, we will no longer be in darkness. We have nothing in common with darkness. So encouraging. That's only a few of the scriptures. But the one that I want to emphasize, you see it here being emphasized, is 1 John 1, 5. That says, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you. So here is a message. And look at how it is formulated. This is the message, like when it says Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. That's this insisting, this emphasizing of this message. This is the message. There's not, there are many other messages that we could share. But this is the message that I want you to get, to understand, that explain the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the message we have heard from him. This is the life that Jesus has lived. When he says, I am the light of the world. This is the message that he wants us to know. Jesus came as a light. But he, he came to tell us that God is light and what it means. So the Apostle John really insists to all of us this morning, this is the message that you need to get. You need to get it in your heart. Not only say, yes, God is light, it's easy. God is love, God is light, God is this, God is that. And just taking it. Because it's so simple, we are becoming so familiar. And we know that familiarity breeds contempt. It's just like indifference because it doesn't touch us. It's so simple. Every, even a child can, can, can get that. God is, is, is light. But here John says, no, 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 no. This is the message. Not any message. This is the message that you need to understand. Amen? So that's what we will try to, to work toward this morning. What exactly does this mean? 
God is light. If you want to understand the character of God, you need to observe light. You need to discover, if you, we have many engineers here, what, how does light work? What's the usefulness of light? What does light do? And why is it uh, important? If you know what light is, then you will know that God will do this work in you. That's what it means. Light is in a certain way. Light accomplishes certain usefulness. God will accomplish the same usefulness into your life as God does in the natural world. That's what it means. That's what John is after. So three things that we are going to look at this morning. The next slide, you have it here. Light reveals. You can use God's light to measure anything. And light makes things grow or energizes. It brings life uh, into the world, into the natural world. And we will see these three and give some uh, example of that. So let's start with the first one. Uh, first fact about light is that light reveals. How do I know you are here today? How do I know you are right there, that you are real, that uh, you exist? that you are here, that you have been here today. The lights are on, I can see you. If you remember a few months ago when we had the Family Fun Day, we had the wonderful mime, the dancing with the gloves in the dark here, the dancing in the dark with the song. It was, wasn't it great? We want to see more of that. And it was, we had turned off the lights here. We couldn't see anybody, but we could only see the shape and the mime that they would do with the white gloves here, with the music playing, and it was wonderful. It was dark, we couldn't see. Then when you switch the light on, you see everything. So light does that, it reveals. Long time ago, my brother and I, we were not Christians, and we were somewhere in the western part of Canada, and we were looking for a place to sleep. And uh, we found a new friend in a bar, and uh, with a, in a region that we had never seen. It was in the countryside in the Rocky Mountains. And this friend says, I have a, a place to live, and it's on this road, so and so, in the countryside road. You just drive there, go there, and you will find a place uh, for the night. So my brother and I went in the car. It was raining. There was a heavy fog. It was in the dirt road. It was dark at night. It was really so when we thought that we had found the place, there was a little path going up the mountain. So we followed the trail to what we thought was going to be his house where we could spend the night. And, but it was so dark. The fog was so thick that we couldn't see even a foot in front of us. We had no light. We were just trying like blind people to go through the, to, the, to hope. So finally, we found the house. We came into the house, and then it was the chicken house. <laughs> and we scared the chicken. <laughs> good, good. And uh, so we, we were in the wrong place. OK, anyway. So the first function of the light, it reveals something. It enables us to, to see something that was already there, OK? Something that already exists, a reality, that was there, but we didn't know that it was there because we, it was revealed only if we see the light. Amen? Salvation is like this. Salvation always brings light to those in darkness. Salvation will always have the removal of light. It is necessary. And light comes into each individual through one thing, the light of God, through the revelation of Jesus Christ, which is not quite there yet. You hear the message, it's a good news, you're attracted to it, you want to say yes to it, but you need one more step. The infiltration or the penetration of that revelation or the light of that revelation into your life. Now light comes in and you enter into a life of light through the revelation of God's love, through the penetration, the reception of that light into you. So that's why. 
One of the first work of the Holy Spirit that Jesus announced when he says another one will come, another comforter and helper will come, it is necessary that the Holy Spirit would bring the light into all of our darkness by convincing us, convincing the world of the meaning of sin, righteousness, and judgment. You see, that, that reality of sin existed. That reality of our unrighteousness and the righteousness of God existed. The reality of God's judgment ahead existed. But we were in darkness. We didn't get it until the Holy Spirit convicted us it was necessary. The first work of the Holy Spirit for us to receive the light is to convince us this is what happened. You have sinned in your life. Because you have sinned in your life, you cannot be righteous before God. And what is awaiting you in the future, in your future, is eternal damnation. And then you can decide what you are going with that. But the first work of the Holy Spirit is this one, to convict and bring that light into our life. It's already existed. It was already a truth, but we were unaware of that. We were uh, careless about it. We didn't care about it. We didn't even want to hear about it. But when the Holy Spirit came, you know, in my past, many times, the, the, the Lord came to knock at the door of my heart with different people at different times to tell me about this message. I didn't care. But the day that the Holy Spirit convicted me, I said, Lord, come into my life. I want to be saved. I want to follow you. I got the message. When I was, w actually I was watching the movie uh, of David Wilkerson, made by David Wilkerson, The Road to Armageddon. That is a movie, a prophetic movie about the events that will take place in this world at the time of Jesus coming. And one time in the movie, there was uh, pictures of uh, uh, typhoons and earthquakes and a lot of disasters and stuff like that. And then the, the voice says, and this same God who are, has control over the elements of nature, who has created everything in this world, is coming again and he will judge all sinners. Wow, when I heard that, the fear of God gripped my heart and I gave my heart to the Lord there. The Holy Spirit convicted me of the meaning of sin, righteousness, and judgment because I had not believed in Jesus Christ. The reality existed, but I was not yet uh, into that revelation. So the first work of the Holy Spirit. And one of the first fruit that this is working in our lives is the opposite of darkness. We said last, the last two weeks that the, the sin thrives in darkness and in an environment of lies, deceit, because that's one of the first truths about uh, people who choose to sin is, is like uh, uh, we have the thought that we can hide the sin that we have through deceit and lies. And sin thrives in an environment of darkness, lies, and secret. Sin grows in the dark. So if darkness is that, sin thrives in an environment of deceit and darkness, the opposite should be true. You, you agree with me? The opposite of that should be true. So what is the opposite of uh, deceit, hiding, keeping in secret, covering? What is it? It's to confess. So the first work that the result of that conviction of the Holy Spirit must come to lead to confession. But confession sometimes is not enough for everybody for the different types of sin that we have, especially sins that have to do with habits that you have to break. Um, sometimes a bad habit, a sin, is you can be delivered by God. God touch your life and... Psh, this is not a problem for you for the rest of your life. It's, you're over that. You're, you've been set free. You're delivered. But for some other people, they are in shame. They are in guilt. They want out of that. But it seems that they are going back. They are going back. They pray. They want to change. They try to change. They, they, they promise they will change. But then they go back. 
Think uh, for a moment about the, the uh, anony uh, alcoholic anonymous or addicted to anything anonymous or whatever it is like this. W what's the success? W what's the, the, the key to their success? They have um, brought into their system something that Christian, we, we, we would do good to, to understand also. Alcoholic is there. He wants out, but he cannot get out of it. So he goes into this group of fellowship of people like-minded. You know, they have the share sinfulness, the darkness in their life. And then they confess. Hi, my name is, and I am an alcoholic. I am a drug addict. This is how I live. This is how I destroy my wife. This is how, what I did. This is why I went to prison. This is what, blah, blah, blah. Whatever I've done. Confession. But number two, what makes a success is that they have a fellowship. And with this fellowship, they become accountable to one another. Uh, and then it, it is becoming a rule among them. If you are tempted and you feel weak, call me. I'll, I'll be there. I, I'll come to you. I will help you. I will support you. We will pray together. Uh, we will have fellowship together. We will talk to you. Don't, don't just isolate yourself. And many times what we do Christians, and we make a mistake, I think, in some cases, we confess. And because we are ashamed of something, we, we, are, we have been in darkness, we have had a bad um, habit of some kind, and we are ashamed of it, and we wouldn't want anybody to know about it. So it says, God, I come before you in my secret room, and I'm telling you, God, I know you will forgive me. That's great. We must do that, number one. But number two, sometimes it's not enough. And that's why many Christians, they go back. Why do so many people, they want out of an habit, but they go back? Maybe this, the part that is missing is the accountability, the, the fellowship part. The, the support, the moral support, the, moral, the, the strength that we receive from a group of like-minded people who live for a cause, who pray, and there's an atmosphere. When, when we walk here every Sunday, there is an atmosphere. There is a positive atmosphere for your children to thrive, for, for you to, to, to feel some form of encouragement according to what you have been going. So it exists. This is real. This is real. So when we just sometimes confess to God, it's good. We must do. That's number one rule. But sometimes we must do the next step, go open to confession to someone or, or admitting someone or asking someone for fellowship. So that's number two. Amen. Amen. God reveals reality. He opened the eyes of the heart. What happens when our hearts get open? Next slide here. Paul is praying. And look at the results that you will see here. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. Or, this is the New Living Translation, the, the New King James or ESV. Or, Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened. The understanding, the spiritual understanding, the, the heart, the spiritual man. The eyes are enlightened. There's a flood of God's light that comes into our hearts. That was not there before. Our heart was on his own. Our heart was covered in darkness and everything. And then suddenly, the heart comes flooded with God's light. And then it says, you can understand the hope. You can understand what God is bringing to your life, the plans of God for your future. Number two, you can understand, which is also very necessary for a life of faith, the great, amazing power of God that is available to all of us. He has given that to us. We cannot live without this hope. We need to know that we have strength, that we have gods on our side, that we can move mountains, that we can uh, do something or achieve something or get out of something or be victorious over something. We need to discover the, this new uh, power. You know, uh, you know, how many of us in the past, we, we try, we try, we try certain things and it doesn't work. And then you ask God and then zoop. And then it's, it's done. We need to, our eyes need to be enlightened so that the exceeding greatness of God will start to make sense. It will build our faith. I can do that. 
I can do it for God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. This is, again, a simple concept, but it's a simple concept that many times we don't use because maybe we, there's not enough flooding of lights to understand the exceeding great power of God and what it means in terms of our daily life and everything. And then it says, so that he, there's a goal here. There, there's, there's a pathway here. There's a goal so that he may give you wisdom. Wisdom for life. We all, we need so much wisdom. If you're a parent here today, you need so much wisdom, so much more than you have. And revelation of, and, the, and the knowledge of God to understand God better, more, and growing into this understanding. So for that, we need our hearts to be flooded with God's light. That's how we start to grow and develop with, with the Lord. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Do you have that light? Yes, you have that light. It's there for you. Amen. But in order to see the light, you need to have healthy eyes. And uh, you see, I'm becoming an eye doctor for you today. So if you have problems after, I, uh, I'll send you my bill next week. Yeah. So the eye is the lamp of the body. Jesus says that if your eye is healthy, your old body will be full of light. Okay, that's great. We want our body to be. So there's so many things, and I really, I'm not an expert in uh, this kind of uh, medicine uh, science, medical science, but I've tried to find some simple truths. You know, Google is amazing. And uh, so I kept only the few parts of the, of the, that will make sense to us. The cornea, which is the protective area, the window of your eyes, okay? And then you have the uh, iris here, the blue eyes, brown eyes, green eyes, gray eyes, uh, the cute eyes, you know? And, and this one moves and it, it controls the amount of light that enters into the eye. And then you have the lens, you know, sometimes you hear people having a cataract and they need to change the lens there. They will do it. Nowadays, it's easy to do that, apparently, but I wouldn't like it to be done to me. <laughs> it's, it's like a, a clear disc that helps focus the light on the retina. The retina is a very sensitive uh, part of your, of your eyes. And if you, uh, I looked at so many pictures yesterday. If you have a candle here, it's like the, the light will cross over like this, and the candle comes upside down. It works just the same as a, um, uh, as a camera. And then the sensitivity of the light and everything communicates through the uh, optic nerves, and it goes to your brain. Hey, amen, we've, done so we've studied something today. Hallelujah. But how many of us know that there is a lot of disease of the eyes? Some people cannot see far, some people cannot see near, some people are having like what we described, the cataract, it gets da darker, you know, and everything. There's a lot of problems. In the Bible, it describes some texts like this, in Romans it says, their mind become darkened. That's what a cataract will do, it becomes darkened. The, something gets, uh, you know, uh, it keeps the light from going to the retina and then the, it's getting darker. They need thicker glasses and all of this. Uh, they have been darkened and they're understanding. So if your eyes are healthy, your spiritual understanding, your body will be full of light. God can reveal. God can come to you. Prayer. You know, you communicate with God. You read something. You get something. You, you learn something. Your knowledge of God is good. But the second part, be careful. But if your eye is bad, oh, we have a problem. If your eye is healthy, you're, you're doing fine. If your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Because whatever comes into your eyes or into your spiritual understanding, 
that is good, that is healthy, that is God's. Your old body, your way of life, your actions, your behavior, your service, your usefulness. It's going to be great because your full body is going to be full of light. But if it's not in good conditions, your old body is full of? Darkness. That's not good. <laughs> Do you agree that it is not good? Yes. Yeah. So we have a choice here. We are full of light. My body is full of light. Or my body can be full of darkness. And if the light in you, the little remaining light, there's not enough light going through the retina of your heart, not enough light of God, how great is the darkness? The absence of God, the misunderstanding, and then people... You know, people are, were there in the church. They are Christians by name. They are Christian parents. But they are not following God anymore. The, the, the darkness, the light in them has become darkness. The darkness is, is more. And the light is getting weaker. That's not what we want for Christians. The light should be growing, not diminishing. Amen? Let's go to the next one. And this, this phenomenon does not happen in one amazing transformation. Like, you get getting Christian, and then tomorrow, and then, wow, you'll, everything is light. No, there's, there's a progress, and there are some discipline. There are things that you need to do. You see, like, for those of us who wear glasses, every now and then, we need to go for a checkup. And then sometimes the glasses are getting a little bit uh, weaker, for, or our eyes getting weaker instead, not our glasses. <laughs> glasses don't change. <laughs> but the usefulness of the glasses is not uh, producing the same result as before. It's not so dark. It's not so black. So then they, they examine our eyes, and then they tell us you need to do something about it. So th that's the same way. So for the light of God to move on in our lives, it's a gradual process. And we cannot handle any with all the revelation of God in one shot. So we need to grow. We need to build up our, on our faith and our experience. And then it leads us from glory to glory and to the likeness of God. So the purpose of God to enter human hearts is that we might see the reality. And light reveals and so does God. The revealed will of God provides light and provides guidance. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eye, the word of God. And, you know, you heard us, you hear us all the time making strong appeal and, and, and insisting and uh, exhorting about the importance of reading the word of God. But we will never do it enough because Christian Actually, we should not even talk about it because every Christian should know that. And most of you, I think, you are plugged into the Word of God anyway. But unfortunately, it's not true for all. And, and sometimes it is not enough of the Word of God. It provides guidance. And look at the, the next statement, giving insight for living. It gives, you read the Word of God, it gives. The light comes and it gives you insight. It gives you wisdom. It adds something to your life for today. It gives you an answer to a question. It gives you a sense of peace, a sense of direction for something that is important in your daily life. It gives you insight for living that life in the light. Because our team today is living in the light. So you need that. And Psalm 119, 130, as people understand your word, it brings light to their lives. As we read, but as we understand, as we spend sometimes, it makes sense. And your word makes even simple people wise. I knew in my church in Canada when I was first saved, there were a few people, it's funny to, to, to hear that, but in Canada you would assume that everybody knows how to read. But there were some people who did not have that chance. Maybe they had poor parents or uh, they had been neglected, but they could not read. But when they became Christian, I knew at least two of them for sure. They 
just wanted the word of God so much. They wanted to, to, to get the word of God. They have learned to read just by the word of God, just by their willingness to spend time and with other people helping to recognize word. And they, they did, and they, 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 they moved on. So the word of God makes simple people. You don't need to have a degree in theology to understand God. You don't need to have a, a doctorate degree in anything. You can be having a, a, not a high level of education and be a man and a woman of wisdom. You, you, you understand that. Because the Word of God does that, and it is so, so important. Point number two, uh, besides the light that reveals, the light of God is also the best measuring stick. If you are working as an engineer, or maybe an architect, a surveyor, or even in construction, the laser beam is used a lot and the light to measure the angle and, and the, the curves and the, 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 the slopes and, and the, the height and, and all of this. So it is very, very much used. You can use the word as a light, as a laser beam to measure when things are not in line. And uh, the next slide, be the light in your culture. Look at the first scriptures here, the measuring stick. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what partnership as a righteousness with lawlessness or fellowship as light with darkness? What partnership? And this is not only uh, in one area, but there's any type of partnership. Business, relation, friendship, a man, uh, boy, girl's relationship, you know, these kind of things. What fellowship or what partnership the, the 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 light of the word of god is supposed to make that clear this area here the word of god gives us clear instructions and and advice and many people ignore and then they get into trouble get into financial trouble, breach of contracts, uh, uh, deceitfulness, uh, uh, losing money, uh, divorce, uh, whatever it is, because we have entered into uh, this without the light that show what is crooked and what is, is straight over here. And this is very, very important. You see, in Proverbs chapter 4, it says, it describes us how your light might be supposed to be growing. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn. It's nighttime, it's dark, there's no light, then dawn comes, there's a small light at the horizon. And then lunchtime, you have to wear your sunglasses and your, your cap and your umbrella and it's too hot and you're sweating and you, you know, I know sometimes I, I walk outside and I close my eyes. I'm walking like this. I cannot even open my eyes. And the path of the righteous is like that, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. This is how a Christian ought to be living in the kind of life. But that means that it, it accomplish something out side of you. Until now we have talked about the enlightenment of your heart, the eyes of your heart, for yourself, the wisdom, the insight for living. Now we're going beyond. We are living in a society. We're living in a group of people. We're living in a world that doesn't think the same standards, the same morality, and the same way that we have. But us because we have the light of God in us, we bring lights. We, we shine lights. We, the, the people see us. We are different. We are not in darkness. We are not like. Look at uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. We do not belong to the night. We are not like them. Uh, for those who sleep, sleep at night. Those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled. We do not belong, so let us not be like. So we are different. We have received the insight and the light of God. But the verse that I really want to, you to pay attention to is this one, because this is the verse, I believe, that describes our generation right now at this moment. And this verse has always troubled me. 
because I've read it many years ago and I heard the sermon on that topic years, years ago, that there would be a time when people would call darkness light and light darkness, evil good and good evil. There was a time that will, will come. There will be a time that will come. We are right there. We are right there. You have heard about the, the, these things on the U U.S. Supreme Court. And you know how the U.S. Uh, country is a leading country in terms of morality, religion, lifestyle, everything that happens in the U.S. We all follow behind them. So uh, it's going to affect the whole world. Ireland not too long ago voted over that. Canada has voted that a long time ago. And today... If you take the stick of, the, of the, the laser beam of the Word of God, the measuring stick, over what the Bible says on homosexuality, gay marriage, and everything, and you just say what it says, you become the haters. You're the bad guy. You are troubling. You are a hater. You commit a hate crime. Soon we will not be even to pronounce the word in, in church and say any opinion because this is hate. This is what, what a world that boasts to be a pluralistic world. Everybody can say anything except what the word of God says because you become the bad guy. But that's, that's what says how terrible it will be when this time comes. And this is the generation. But at the same time says you are not like, you don't belong there, so let us not be like the others. We are not like this. And the path of the righteous is shining ever brighter to the fullness of light. In a world that is dark, in a world that does not have the measure, that doesn't go according to the, the, the measuring stick, we can measure what's right and wrong and stick to it because that's what we are and our light will shine people will see not everybody is is in, uh, in agreement but many people are afraid to to speak and they need to hear you know how many people voice their 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 opinions on these uh, touchy topics serious many christians don't even dare to go there and many christians they have even accepted you know, the other point of view. Many, especially in the young generation, uh, our children, you know, our, uh, the, the teenagers of today, the young adults of today, if you talk to them, shh, it's like they already have accepted, like, like this is the, the way of life, this is normal, this is uh, like this. How terrible it would be for those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness. When people see no distinction between good and evil, destructions will soon follow. That's what the Bible says. It's easy for people to say, no one can decide for anyone else. And that is a strong argument in our generation. No one can express an opinion for someone else to say what's really right and wrong. If it's right for you, then it's right. If you think it's wrong, then keep it to yourself. You know, like that's what it means. I cannot force my view on, on somebody else. That's a very strong argument for today. You know, people may get drunk and says, it doesn't matter, it's my life. I can get an abortion. This is my body. It belongs to me. You know, extramarital sex, nothing is wrong. It's so much accepted. The word fornication does not even exist in dictionaries anymore. Don't, don't talk about that. It, it sounds so archaic that it sounds like a, almost on the st stone age or something. When people make excuses for their evil actions and they break down the distinctions between right and wrong and light and darkness, wow, moral becomes very fuzzy in all of this. You can use God to measure everything. And God sees man according to the truth, according to the light. It doesn't change. God is light. That means it does not change next week. Says so that God is losing his light? God was light? No, God is light. So the light, God sees man. He sees the reality. It's just that people in darkness don't recognize this until the Holy Spirit brings conviction in this. Another practical application, if a for example, if a couple would have 
a very unhappy marital relationship because they've been neg neglecting each other and not living right or whatever. Either the man or the woman, if they go to their friends and seek advice, they will both have a lot of advice. The friends of the woman will give her advice because they are friends. Yeah, your husband is bad, blah, 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 blah. And then the friends of the husband will do the same. Yeah, you should divorce her. Yeah, but be careful for, the, for your, for your uh, bank account, though, and something like that. <laughs> anyway, they will receive a lot of advice, OK? And then maybe one of the two will become uh, tempted with an attractions, infatuations, to uh, run off with the, another person and start all over again with another one because that would be so much more perfect. It would be so much more attracting and, and, and fun and exciting. But then they decide, or each one, they will measure their confusions and their hurt emotions with the measuring light of God, their situation. What will they receive from that? They will receive something that will not be pleasant. They will receive something that will not please their flesh. Because the flesh always wants to go free. And at that moment, they will, if the, the light of God will continue to touch their heart, and then they will realize, this is a dream that doesn't work. It's not, I'm not going to reach to happiness by doing that. I will cause even more problems. And eventually, this blindness will pass, and later on they will become so grateful that God's light stopped them from going into darkness. You see, it starts here, but if the measuring of God's light is applied to any situation, at first it will not please the flesh. It's, it's painful. I, I, that's not what I want. I, I want to do what I want to do. But the light of God will bring peace eventually, the blindness, and then the understanding, that would have been a terrible mistake. You know divorce is, you, you know, you understand that divorce is not the solution? Because you still have the children, you still have the finance, you still have the house, you still have the payments, you still have the, the monthly support, it's so much. And maybe many times people want to divorce, because they want to finish to have anything to do with that person. If they have children, they will never come to that place because they will always have to come back, get this signature for this because they have children in common. They will never be set free from that. So, so divorce is never a solution. But you need to see the light of the measuring truth of God into, into that, amen? The light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot put it out. The third point, light not only reveals and measures, but it makes life grow. And we have an example in nature every single day of our life. This morning, when we were sleeping and everything was dark outside, finally the sun came up. And the sun, the sun came and found the world in darkness in the world sleepy. The birds were sleeping, they were quiet, and then the sun came up and says, bird, wake up and sing. And the birds started to sing. And the flowers and the grain were, you know, sleeping, <laughs> and carbonic gas, and then the sun comes up, feels Trees of the field, flowers of the field, grow, and then it grows. Because the sunlight makes everything in normal condition, not talking in the wilderness or in the excessive, but in a normal condition, the light. Imagine this planet without the sun light. It would be like ice age. It would be, everything would be dead. There would be no plants. There would be no animals. There would be no human life. There would be nothing. But the sun is there and it warms the planet and it, you get everything. We love sun. We go to the beach when it's sunny and everything. It's so wonderful. So then the sun called the fields of grain, flowers, and the trees to grow. And a sleepy man. 
The sun comes. Time to wake up. Eat your cereal. Put your toast in the toaster. Eat your eggs. Go to work. Produce. Earn your money and live your life. And then the life comes with this every day. God made it like this on a cycle. We sleep. It's darkness. No productivity. And then the sun comes and life is back. A life that thrives, a life that is being energized, a life that produces, uh, a life that invents, a life that creates, a life that produces something uh, really wonderful. And that is how God wants, wants us to be. God is light, and God intensifies and energizes and brings meaning to our humanity. Without the, the light of God in our life, our life has not the meaning intended by God to have it. And then when God's light comes, it gets always better. But also, when I ask you at the beginning, is it easy to live in the light? It is the task of all believers to pass on the divine light they have received. Now we're going further. You see, at first the light enlightened my heart. Second, I can measure things in the world in which I live. My morality, my choices. Now here I have a responsibility. If I have the light of God in me, I cannot just let people who are in darkness continue on in darkness. You, you understand that. So here in the scriptures it says, wonderful, so that you may be, that's a goal. We are going in that direction. This is where God wants us to go, the directions, that we may be blameless, innocent, living a life without discredit, like not having, going into something that people can blame over us. Yeah, among a crooked generation, a dark generation, and that you may shine like stars in the world. That's the direction that we go. It is the task of all believers to pass on divine light that we have received. All who have entered in the light, you bear this responsibility. So it's not easy to live in the light. Because you have received this light, you must shine the light. But many of us, it's just, the, this concept, this idea went away. We just live in the light. We enjoy the enlightenment. We, we like the worship. We like God's presence. But here, it says, what about those who have not? Me, I've been saved. I was in darkness. My, my, my wife's younger sister is the one who shined her light, her new light. If she was a baby Christian, and then she shared with us, and eventually it led us to believe in Jesus Christ. We are ever grateful. When we think about how we became Christian, we go back to this hospital room. When we found her, she was just saved from death, and she was now reading her Bible. I described it a few weeks ago. And she is the one who told us these words that led us eventually to seek, buy a Bible, go to see a movie, and then receive Jesus Christ. Christian cannot sit and watch other continues into darkness because those who are in darkness are heading into eternal damnation. So if, if you have the light of God, God is light, and you have the light of God, you understand the concept of eternity. You understand the concept of the good news, of salvation. So, it, so now you, your mind has been flooded with that light, that understanding. You cannot just sit and let it pass and ignore that everybody else are going to hell. Light desires to banish darkness and brings the light to other people everywhere. But here is the difficulty. When you will take the light of God, or the light of the gospel, to someone. By necessity, you must reveal things about these people that they would rather not be revealed. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? You have the light. You go to them. They are in darkness. By necessity, your light, your words, the, the measuring light of God, when you will share it to them, they will not like it. 
you are disturbing their darkness. Evil deeds wants darkness, they don't like the light. So if you want to be a missionary, an evangelist, or just a Christian living in the light, this is not something that you have an option. Your light must lead you to them and expect what is going to come ar around the corner. They are not going to be comfortable. Light is uncomfortable to those who are accustomed to darkness. As children of light, we have to reflect uh, his light into a world that is darkened by sin. This is a great responsibility. And our goal is this verse here, to open the eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. This is what we have to do. And if you look at this verse, it says, whoa, it's not going to be easy. Because here, I am going to try to turn people, not only from their darkness, which is already negative, because there are things that they would rather leave hidden. They don't want you to expose. But look here, there is the dominion of Satan. So you have to come in direct war, conflict, attack with the dominion of Satan. Is it going to be easy to live in the light? No. But, don't forget, last week, we have been delivered and transferred into the kingdom of the Son. We have received the victory of the King. We have been set free. We have the power. That's why it says in, before, remember the verse in Ephesians chapter 1? We are praying that uh, our hearts will be flooded with the light so that we may understand the exceeding great power that God is giving us. That's the time that you need to have that light to know, I have the power, I can do that. I have faith, I will do it God, whatever the cost, whatever the price. Lord, I'm not going to be afraid. This is the light, you have done it for me. I am your servant, use me Lord, I am yours. Amen? So this, these are the elements of success, all the ingredients.